Every, Every criminal, criminal thinks they, they are, are smooth, smooth, but, but they, they eventually, eventually slip. Apparently he had a sort of confrontation with another Facebook influencer, Andrew Caldwell. I'd never heard of this man before. So I'm watching the video and I'm like, you know, he was saying Darius had scammed one of his friends and Darius was demanding the order number on live. And he was like, I'm not doing that because you're known for doxing people and putting people's personal information out there. So Andrew posted this video on his page. So I went in there and I typed, I said, he got me out of almost $300. And out of all this time that I've tried to reach out to Darius, he goes under my comment, what's your order number? His favorite line, what's your order number? I put my order number in, I said, and I've given you this several times before. Let us get up. Let us speak up. Oh, so we can be heard. Oh, so we can. Three, two, one. Disclaimer, all topics in this video are alleged and allegedly, and they are strictly for entertainment purposes only. Let's do it. Dumb. Yay. How are Hi, you? I'm good. Long way home, the Let's intro. I love it. Let's do it. Let's Topping do it up it. with you like veggies in a food processor for Thanksgiving dress. Okay, we got to be ready with that introduction. Yeah, that was great. Jay's on point. Y'all better, y'all interviews, y'all interviews better be on point. Cause Jay know what he's doing. Jay know. Let's go, Jay. Let's do it. Jay, everybody do watch you. When you doing your post about me, great job. If you are not one of my Apple Pies, those are my subscribers. You better go ahead and subscribe. It's a billion, jillion, kajillion people here on YouTube, baby. You might not come across me again. Set your notifications to all. That way you'll get alerts when I upload a new video. Feel free to like, comment below, and share. Be sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Click in this video descriptions. The links are at the bottom or click on my channel tabs at the about tab click the links below now let's talk about it as of the publishing date listed on this video darius williams also professionally known as darius cooks has not been charged or convicted of any crimes all participants in this docuseries have willingly agreed to participate and share their story as well as answer questions pertaining to Darius Cooks Williams. All allegations are alleged. On the last episode, we got to hear Alicia's story on not receiving a refund from the Dining with Darius event. If you missed that episode, click in the description or go to the playlist. Now it's time for our final story, and that's Andrea's story. She never received the merchandise that she ordered from Darius, and she never received a direct refund from Darius. Let's get into her story. We're ready, and we're rolling, and we're recording. Hey, it's me, Jay Evans, with my special guest today that is helping me set, shed some important light on this subject. Andrea, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am good because I am chopping it up with you today. And she agreed to let me talk to her um, because she was affected by the same thing that's happening. So I'll start with asking you this first question. When I say the name Darius Cooks, what's the first word that comes to your mind? Despicable. <laughs> okay. Now, I've talked to a couple of different people with different issues, um, and yours is also different from theirs. 
Now, you ordered from Darius, but you did not receive your order. Had you ever ordered anything from him before? Yes, I have. Um, my first order with him took place October 2020. I received those items. And what did you order? There were some cookbooks. This time when you placed your order, what did you order from Mr. Cooks and how much was it? I ordered two additional cookbooks, his everyday skillet and his everyday knife. Um, with tax and shipping costs, it was just shy of 300, like $297. And what payment method did you use? I used a platform called Sezzle. For people that don't understand what Sezzle is, can you please explain that to them? It's similar to Afterpay or PayPal, where you can um, make installments of like four installments. Um, once you place your order with a merchant, that merchant is paid up front. Mm -hmm. And they take out the first initial payment upon order. And then they take out three additional payments every two weeks after that. Okay. So the merchant, just so people are clear, even though you're paying the payments, the merchant that you got the merchandise from is automatically paid, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Now, when you didn't receive it, did you try to contact Darius to see what was going on with the order? Yes, I did. So my first email to him was asking, was re in regards to my order, and he kind of grilled me, you know, well, what does your order say? You should have a tracking number there. And I was like, no, it's like the only email I got from you was that my order was received and you would email me with the tracking number once my items were shipped. And I sent him a screenshot. It took about a day and a half, maybe later for him to send me a tracking number. But that was about it. I have no, I've had no more contact with him since. So when you got the tracking number, were you able to see the movement, like click on it and see it shipped, it's in progress, anything? It was shipping label created. That's as far as it went. And nothing else showed up? No. Okay. Was Sizzle helpful regarding this issue? Like, were they able to refund you your money? What Cezzle did, um, so I filed a, um, a, a complaint with Cezzle saying I did not receive my merchandise, letting them know that um, I've tried to reach the merchant multiple times and he refused, he has ceased all contact with me. Um, so they opened an investigation and they came back and they were like, um, we apologize, but we are unable to refund and they said that the merchant had given them a tracking number, so the merchant had fulfilled their obligations, but they did not look into it any further after that. Nothing showing that this tracking number was attached to my address, nothing. So after that, did you even try, like how many times did you actually try to contact Darius to check on the order? Gosh, I continue to, I want to say it was about six or seven times I tried to contact him and just received the same generic pre-populated email. Make sure your address is correct. Make sure it wasn't electronic. But as far as him saying something to me, I, he, never, he never reached out to me. I tried to contact him through Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, I've also commented on a couple of his lives requesting, you know, I haven't heard from you. I'm, I need status on my order or something. And he just disregards, doesn't even mention it. Have you ever ordered anything else and you said so as a form of payment? Yes. And have you ever had this issue? No, um, because there are some stores that you can just walk in and also use Sezzle and walk out with your merchandise. I've never had this issue with anyone else before. So that brings us to the actual live. Now, you all will get to see the footage. Now, Darius said this in regards to you on the live. He also said when he showed his examples that everything was in real time. Only order number we did get is the girl on Twitter who said, um, 
she want her stuff. It was in transit, but she paid with Cezzo, so I can't even refund her because she didn't pay me. And then y'all was getting mad at me because I can't refund her. I never... <laughs> What's up, Cassandra? I, um... She never paid me. She paid the Cecil people and she got mad at me. When you go buy a car and something go wrong after you done bought the car, you can't be upset at the people. You got to go to the finance company. That's where you got the car finance there. You got to go to the finance people got to take care of that. Not, you don't go back to Comax and say something wrong with my account. You go to the finance people. That's who you finance with. You didn't finance with the dealership. So I don't know. Where are you going? Mm. So I don't know. 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 I don't know what y'all want me to do, child. Okay. I don't control it. So now, if you got somebody else, we order number, we can check it. But the, the last thing, the, the one common thread between all of this is I still ain't seen no order number. That's the one common thread between all of them. No, you can't refund Cezu. I showed you. Here. Let me see. I tried to refund her. April 13th at 4.34 p.m. I refunded $297.73. Even though the product was shipped, even though the post office lost the product, I'm going to take the hit for this. Okay? That's because I'm a bad person. Right? Okay. You don't have the ability to refund somebody if they didn't pay you. I can't, you see, 434, a refund is pending. 434, unable to refund. What the hell do y'all want me to do? It's un, I am unable to refund. That does not have her information. I always got her email. And that, that um, address is my old address, not hers. That's the fulfillment address, where it come from. So what y'all want me to do? I can't do nothing. Y'all be mad at me like. Did y'all be mad at me like I did something? Okay. Now, anybody have any other? Um, says what gives you the money? Why should they have to refund the customer? You have the money from the sale. The agreement of the transaction is between Cecil and the person. You ever bought a car before? You ever financed the car before? <laughs> Think of it as the same process when you finance a car or when you get a mortgage, all right? When you finance a car, when you get a mortgage, yes, you go buy the product from the merchant, but the agreement is between you and the finance company. It's called a contract. It is not between me. I don't know if y'all ever bought a car, financed a car, or ever bought a house, okay? It's, it worked the exact same way. She borrowed the money from Cezzle. Even if I wanted to refund Cezzle, I can't even refund Cezzle the money. I just tried to show you how I just tried to go in there and um, refund. It don't go through. Why y'all getting upset with me? What y'all want me to do? I showed it to you in real time. In real time, I showed it to you. Now, anything else? Yes, I got the money, but I don't have the ability to refund through the system. Did you, did you, what can't you understand about that? That's how a loan work, okay? A loan. That's what Cecil is. Cecil is a loan, okay? Do you understand that? It's a loan. You understand? Loan. Loan. She loaned the money from Cecil. Borrow from Cecil. Cecil loaned her the money. Okay? I, in order for her to get the refund, she got to go back from the people she borrowed from. She got to go to Cecil. So can you tell us what happened on that live that he's talking about? Okay, so <clears throat> apparently he had a sort of confrontation with another Facebook influencer, Andrew Caldwell. I never mm -hmm. heard of this man before. 
So I'm watching the video and I'm like, you know, he was saying Darius had scammed one of his friends and Darius was demanding the order number on live. And he was like, I'm not doing that because you're known for doxing people and putting people's personal information out there. So Andrew posted this video on his page. So I went in there and I typed, I said, he got me out of almost $300. And out of all this time that I've tried to reach out to Darius, he goes under my comment, what's your order number? His favorite line, what's your order number? I put my order number in, I said, and I've given you this several times before. Took him about 10, 15 minutes and he comes back and he says, I just tried to refund you, but you ordered through Sezzle. I don't know what that means. That had Sezzle has nothing to do with it. Merchants can refund through Sezzle to their um, customers. So this was the only time he has ever replied to you by you being on that live. Yes. Now, a lot of things that happen to people is sometimes they'll go on a live and he might address them and then they might get Docs, if he puts their information out there, did that happen with you or did anybody from the DI Hive say anything to you? Um, oh, yeah, I I got attacked. There's like over 500 comments under that thread. <laughs> now, all of them weren't negative. All of them weren't bad. I had a lot of people in my corner. But, yeah, I got a lot of hateful, mean comments. Um, he somewhat doxed me on Twitter because I had redacted my last name mm -hmm. and I had put my issue up there on Twitter and I tagged him. And so he shows the screenshot. It has my entire name, my email address. And a lot of uh, followers were thinking that the address on there was mine, but it's not. It's apparently his warehouse address or his fulfillment address. But that's about as far as he's gotten with doxing with me. Did anybody send you any emails? Uh, I did get cussed out about a week and a half ago by a particular lady <laughs> regarding a confrontation in a group. So let me ask you, have you ever ordered any products from any merchant and had an issue and you might have had to correspond with them regarding the issue? Yes, I have. Have and you ever had them release your information like that? Never. Never. They've always tried to make right by it. Um, if, you know, I had an issue once before where they went on the USPS site and saw the same thing that if, you know, they didn't understand why it wasn't delivered. So they reshipped me another package. I still never received that first package. So, you know, they most businesses, you know, they try to do right by their customers. This one right here, he holds himself accountable for nothing. And he points fingers at everyone else except for himself. How do you feel about the whole experience on the live? Like after he responded, after the people in the comments, what did you walk away from it with? It just empowered me to speak up more. It's like, it's like his hive try to come for people who, you know, criticize him, I guess, to bully into silence. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more they come for me, the more I speak out on it. I mean, it's, I'm not going to let them do that to me. I'm going to, I feel like if I don't say anything, that I'm kind of just as bad because I'm not spreading awareness about his behavior and letting other potential consumers buy from this man blindly and not knowing what he's about. What would you say to someone? Because a lot of those people say things like, well, I got my order. You didn't get yours. Um, you're just hating on a black man trying to have a successful business. And they might not have had this issue. So what would you say to those people to make them understand where you're coming from? I'd be like, you received your order. Congratulations. I'm like, but sadly, in most cases, a lot of us haven't. And I am all for supporting black businesses, black owned businesses. However, 
I'm not going to support a black owned business that is ran by a big scam, which is exactly what he's doing. Did you consider yourself a member of his beehive before this happened? No. What do you think like about all this before it actually happened with you? Had you ever heard anything about the customers and the complaints? The only thing I saw was about this time last year. I saw a headline um, saying that um, Sonny Anderson and Kitchenista were calling him out for disrespecting black women and that he denied being a crook. I had this time last year, I'll just say that I had uh, some huge responsibilities on my place that took priority. So I did not follow up. I did not read the article. And by the time everything was settled, I completely forgot about it. So um, Darius started promoting his skillet gate in the fall sometime. Um, so that's when I decided to jump in and place my order. I placed my order November 23rd, 2021. Do you think some of the answers that he kind of gives is distracting or misleading? Like the famous, what's the order number? Um, because he always says that. Yeah, he and when you give him order numbers, he always comes back with some type of excuse. I'm, I mean, I understand, you know, mistakes do happen. You know, sometimes he's made, he's had examples about some have, you know, their order, their cookbook or ebooks, or they didn't enter in the wrong address. This was not, these were none of my issues. His main excuse was the platform that I used to pay him, which he offered in his store, by the way, at the time. So, so Cezo yes. is something that he used. Yes. And to me, I would think if it was a business, right, and he's saying Cezo, that he will reach out to them himself if he was concerned about your order. You would think. But, you know, one of his main quotes in that thread under Andrew's post was, why am I being held accountable for a post off the post office mistake or something to that matter. Um, he, he just doesn't hold himself responsible for anything and he doesn't try to do right. He's just, well, too bad. So sad. You lost out. And he just leaves it like that. Did you check with the post office again? Like did they say? Yes, I did. I, um, I, so I emailed the post office. I want to say late January with that tracking number. They have not, been able to find anything. As a matter of fact, the last time they emailed me was right before Memorial Day with the same status. We have not located your package. So the post office, a reputable business that's been around forever, and I'll say versus Darius that has an alleged 15 year history of restaurants, of failed credit, um, simply says the post office lost it. Right. Okay. Do you think Darius Cooks is going to have a fall from grace? He's already falling from grace, to be honest with you. But him being held accountable and prosecuted, it's definitely going to happen. What would you say to Darius if he's watching this or looking at this right now? Perhaps if you put as much energy as you do in gossiping and bullying and harassing people as you do into your business, you'd probably be a pretty decent businessman. Do you think he is a narcissist? He's a major narcissist. He's always explaining how um, he's always going on lives about situations. Um, he's actually done two videos regarding my situation. Um, the same night, April 13th, he goes in and um, explains that I used Sezzle. He couldn't refund me. You know, he tried to. I, he showed this in real time. Screenshots aren't real time, but... Um, then I saw a lady, um, she, she commented, she's like, you can cash app her. He was like, oh, no, we're not doing that. She done acted a fool. I was like, wow. 
<laughs> so I, you know, I don't know how he thinks I acted a fool when I demanded my money back or I didn't actually, I don't even want the product anymore from the stories I've heard, but he's just very bold about how he takes people's money and then talks trash to them. Like he admitted even with Cecil, yes, I have the money, but she has to go through Cecil. It's in the fine print. There is no fine print. Yeah, I made an agreement to pay them back. It is up to him as a merchant to make sure I get my products or issue a refund. And he can definitely do that through the Cecil app. Other merchants do it. I don't understand why he can't. So he got the money because he gets it up front. You still have to pay Cezzo because you're buying to the installment agreement and you don't have anything at yes. all. Yes. I paid that off January 4th. So, yes. Um, I, had I disputed it through my bank, and which I could have, but they would have gone after Cezzo. And Darius still would have his money. So I'm not going to jeopardize ruining my credit going after Cecil when they did their due diligence and paid that man up front. This is this is a Darius issue. It was never a Cecil issue. And the person did say you can cash app her. And he said because you acted a fool over mm-hmm. something that you did not get, which he got his money and now you paid it off. And anybody to me would act a fool about three hundred dollars. That's nearly three hundred dollars. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that if this was white women with the same issue with him, as far as not receiving merchandise, as far as him not showing up for the events and them getting refunds, as far as them being docked, that he would be able to do this and get away with? It? Darius has no boundaries. He'll do it to anyone. However, I think he would have been held accountable a lot sooner than what he is now. I think um, I think charges, criminal charges would have been filed against this man. So I think he kind of banks on, you know, the lack of knowledge, maybe. As far mm-hmm. as, you know, what you have to do to try to get your refund or try to, you know, lawsuits or anything. Some people just feel like, you know, well, it's not worth hiring an attorney for three, six hundred dollars to sue somebody for some items I never received. So they just kind of let it go. Now, have you heard of Miss Melanie Ford? Yes, I have. Okay. So she was on Roland Martin and she made a good point. Like I learned a lot of knowledge from her and she said he charges under a certain amount. So it's not really considered like a big crime. And if you look at the merchandise, if you look at the events, like even when he plans the events far out ahead of time, Mm -hmm. is like now he has events for 2023, right? Right. So if you buy to go to the events and he cancels it, you can't get your money back no. because it's so far. So right. do you think he is very calculated or do you just think um, it's us? It's the people. I think it's a little bit of both. And I think it varies by state. Um, I think the situation that happened in Rowlett, Texas, I don't think it's based off of the amount of one person. I don't know how many people never received their refunds, but theft of service, if I'm not mistaken, anything totaling over $1,500 is a felony. The last that I checked, I have to do more research on that. But um, other states, I don't know how they operate. Um, I did file my issue with the attorney general's office, with my state. so I really don't know. I guess we'll just see once all of this comes to a head. I mean, all we can do is just keep speaking up. Um, you know, writers, um, journalists, you know, sharing their stories. That's all I can really say about that right now. What made you file with the attorney general? Because some people feel like 
well, nothing's going to happen or nothing's going to be done. What made you brave enough to step up and say, I'll do this? Because I feel like there's probably somebody who is knowledgeable enough that has done the same thing. And like I said, you know, if you get multiple counts and those charges stack up, they're eventually going to step up and do something, I believe. Do you think he's putting black women against each other? Because you have some women, no matter what he says or what he does, they love them. They're a part of the beehive and they're going to take your head off for them. And some women are like, no. And some women don't know what to think. I think he does. I think he's pretty messy, but I think he knows who to gear his audience towards. He knows that there are women out there that are worship the ground he walks on. Um, so he goes out there and he puts his little comments and, you know, he docks his women to sit, to sick these women on people speaking up about him. And from what I've heard, there's been some pretty bad things I've heard about death threats. I think I saw a post. Um, one young lady said on IG live saying that she would shoot anybody that came for Darius. Yeah. Like it is not that serious. Like, you know, you're willing to lose your freedom over somebody who does not give, pardon my language, a rat's ass about you. First thing he's going to say, I never told her to do that. I can tell you right now. <laughs> I never told her to do that. Yeah. And I think people are not realizing, like, at his events, mm -hmm. um, just for the people that might not have gotten their money back, they're saying that once you book an event with him, he doesn't give you the address until like right before, right? And that's what I've heard. Yes. To me, that's dangerous because you don't know where you're going. But just say if somebody shows up that you beat out of their money and they're there on a vendetta to get you. Mm -hmm. So because you're dining with Darius, you might be dining in a body bag. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm just speechless about his actions. I just can't believe that he does and he says the things that he says. I think he posted something and I shared it just the other day saying he doesn't understand why all of the haters, there's room for all of us to make it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like a scammer trying to post a positive quote like if that isn't textbook narcissism I don't know what is <laughs> if he reaches out to you and he says to you Andrea how can I make this right and he says you know I want to try to correct this and I want to be back in your good graces what would you say to that I would tell him to refund the um the route protection package that I had to, the claim that I had to file through them to get part of my uh, money back. And what I also failed to mention is when I placed this order with Darius, one of the, um, one of the cookbooks was an ebook, which I received instantly and downloaded. So it was actually just the, the knife, the skillet and one cookbook that should have been shipped to me in the mail. Are you ever going to use anything from the ebook? Like a recipe? probably not. Probably <laughs> not. You know, um, doesn't even look like anything that he really cooks, to be honest with you, based off of the photos that I'm seeing of his dining events, the things that he's serving to people. It's just like I've heard some of the recipes may be stolen. Mm. And it, you know, it's just kind of hard to tell with him you know, what's authentic and what isn't. I don't think any of it is authentic, to be honest with you. What initially made you say, hey, I like this guy or I like want to try his um, merchandise? Was it like just him and his presentation? Okay, so I discovered Darius right around the time he was launching his Carolina Pound Cake Company. Um, I'm not really a big sweets eater, but I do love pound cakes. And so I'm looking at these and he has a good sales pitch. He has great marketing skills from someone from the outside looking in. Um, I kind of like the way he was engaging with the people on Facebook. Um, he 
there was just a lot of things about him that seemed like he had a really great personality in the beginning. Um, it wasn't until the situation with my order um, that I thought about the article with um, Sonny Anderson and the Kitchenista that I Googled and I'm finding all of these complaints and all of these comments posted under Twitter. Twitter was never a handle that I ever used. I had it for like a year and a half, but I never used it. I didn't like it. So that's when I started seeing all of the behavior. That's when I jumped in and I saw that he had docked Mrs. Holland and her family. And, you know, that's when I started seeing all of the bad behavior of his. And I was just blown away. What would you say to somebody now, if they're kind of iffy about ordering merchandise from Darius, what would you tell them? Don't do it. And I will repeat my story until I get it through someone's head what he's done. Tell him, and I would also let them know, you know, you need to do your research on him because, you know, he has way more negative reviews than he has positive. In fact, I don't think he has any positive reviews at this point. Let us get up, let us speak up, oh, so we can be heard, oh, so we can. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Come on. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's move. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it.